We have a beam, it's uh, supported by two uh, springs. The beam is horizontal and the springs are unstretched without the load. This is a little complicated. So, without the load, this is the load right here. The, string, the springs are unstretched and the beam is horizontal. All right. Then it says, determine the angle of tilt of the beam when the load is applied. So they apply this load. All right. What do you think is going to happen to the springs? They're going to stretch a little. Well, the stiffness of this spring is 3. The stiffness of that spring is 4.5. Plus, the load is applied primarily over on the left side of the beam, not in the middle. It's not symmetrical. So the springs are going to stretch different distances, aren't they? And because they stretch a different distance, let's say this load, this because it's a weaker spring, this is a stiffer spring, and the load's shifted over more toward the left, it's going to tilt that way. See, it's going to be a longer stretch, a shorter stretch. And now they ask you, calculate that angle of tilt. So what is this angle theta? You get a free body diagram, your force of the spring at A, the force of the spring at B, the, the triangular distributed load is replaced by a point load. That point load, let's do the magnitude of the point load. It's because it's a triangular distribution, isn't going to be one half 700 newtons per meter times three meters. This comes in at a, a, a point load of 1.05 kilonewtons applied at a distance of two thirds over or one third back. Well, it's, it's applied at two meters, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. So what you do is to solve for f of a, can you tell what you would do to solve for the magnitude of f of a or magnitude of f of b if that's your preference? Mm -hmm. Do the sum of the moments about point A, that must equal to zero. That'll give you an equation, which is 1.05 kilonewton times its moment arm of two meters. That makes it want to rotate in the clockwise. And then you have equal to, the balance is going to be the F of B with its moment arm distance of six meters because it's attached right out here at D pulling upward and that's going to make it rotate in the opposite. So it's one equation, one unknown. I put it on the other side so I avoid the negative sign. I can solve for F of B. F of B comes in at 0.35 kilonewton. All right, let's do the same. Do the sum of the forces in the Y equal to zero and you have only one unknown f of a comes in at uh, 0.70 kilonewton. You add those together and it checks, make sure you know, it looks good. Okay, now that I have my two forces, I go back to the equation for a spring. The equation for a spring is the force in spring A is equal to the stiffness of the spring A times the stretch in spring A. Both, none of these, one, one spring doesn't go in compression. It's easy. Both of them are in stretch. They're, they're in tension, that they stretch, right? Some problems you can have, oh, that spring is going to compress while this spring over here is going to stretch. A little more challenging. Both of these springs are just going to stretch. So you can calculate the stretch in the spring A. Stretch comes in at a 0 0.23333 meters. And then similarly, the force in B with the stiffness of B, the stretch of B, you get the stretch of B equal to 0 0.07778 meters. So if you think about it, it started here. Maybe this is my stretch of B. This is my stretch of A. It, it, it's, it's like it went down that far. It went down point. You know, here if we convert it to 23.3 centimeters, and this one was 7.7 uh, .7 blah 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 centimeters down. So if I wanted to calculate this angle theta, don't do it too quickly. You th sit in here and make a nice little right triangle. 
and you go, well, that's going to be like 23.3 minus 7.3, because isn't, and then this is over a distance of six meters, so the uh, theta is equal to the arc tangent of the stretch of A minus the stretch of B divided by the, the six meter distance, and that angle theta comes in at 1.49 degrees, one and a half degree. It's a very, very small amount of, of tilt of that beam. If you started getting a tilt of 45 degrees, then we have to check, is that load still applied perpendicular? That would be a big question mark because it, it would be crazy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't write the equation because it's pretty easy and I'm rushed for time. You got it. Any comments, questions? What's the theme? Solve problems. Okay, I'm going to stop. Thank you for your attention. Let me ask.